Okay. This is called a summation notation. I is where you start. N is how many intervals. F of C is the height of a rectangle. If you think of a rectangle, this is change of X. This is F of C. So there's your I. F of C, I. For rectangles, you're going to be adding up rectangles under a curve. This is your change of x, this is f of c. So area, isn't it going to be f of c times change of x? And doesn't this mean you're going to add up, if there's seven rectangles, you're going to go from one to seven, finding the seven rectangles. This is the area of a rectangle. It's called a Riemann sum. You're summing up a whole bunch of rectangles to approximate an area. Now, I'm going to jump this down to here. I'm going to skip this for a second. The definite integral is this. This is huge right here. All right. This right here, area under a curve is an integral. But you have two numbers here. Where it comes from, if you take the limit as n approaches infinity, meaning I have infinite rectangles. n stands for the number of rectangles. If I have an infinite amount of rectangles, won't that mean they don't have any width anymore? So won't your change of x become basically obsolete. Thus, you're going to be summing up all your outputs, f of x's. Aren't you going to be adding f of x, 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 whatever the inner, whatever each one is, you're going to add it one by one by one over and over and over again. You're just basically adding up the outputs. You're basically adding up a whole bunch of lines. And those lines kind of create a graph. Can you see that? Lines with no width. Those lines add up, becoming your area. Where here, once you're adding up a whole bunch of rectangles, these had width, right? Change of x. These do not anymore, because change of x ends up being nothing when your limit approaches infinity. So basically, this integral sign, it's called a definite integral. It's adding up a whole bunch of non-width lines that's creating area under a curve. OK. Now, real, going back to this. This is kind of wordy, but if f is continuous and non-negative, meaning if my function does not have any negative outputs and it's continuous, on the closed interval a, b, then the area of the region bounded by the graph f in the x-axis and the vertical <laughs> lines x equals a and x equals b is given by the definite integral that was very clear, probably. Negative area means it's always below the x-axis. That's why it says non-negative. If the area becomes negative, it's below the x-axis. Basically, what this is saying is if I have a graph, say I have that graph, is this graph continuous? Yes. Is this right here where it says my x-axis. Is that my x-axis right there? Can I call this right here a? Is that x equals a? Can I call this right here x equals b? Am I finding my area between a and b? Now, do those spots actually hit right here? What if b was right here in the middle? Could we take the area up to, say, like, what if B was just some line right here in the middle? Could we take the area from A to B if it was in the middle somewhere? Yeah, in this particular problem, I went from point to point. Now, if I went from this point to this point, you understand my area would be negative because it's below the x-axis? We'll talk about that more. But basically, that's what this is saying. The area under the curve from A to B, this gives you area. Again, x equals A, x equals B. Those are these two lines. You have two lines that make an area. For instance, could I have A and B be from here to here? Could I just want that area right there? I can make A and B be those two. Thus, I have my x-axis, I have the graph, and I have A and B making an area that I want to find. Sometimes A and B are actual coordinates. Sometimes A and B are just two lines that separate the graph. Let's break it up so we know. That's the area we want to find. Anywho, continuity implies integrability. <laughs> integrability. There's a tongue twister for you. 
So if it's continuous, then it is integrable. Try to say that 20 times fast. Anyways, the next thing. If f is defined, so if f exists at x equals a, so if there's a function when x equals a, if I take the area from a to a, is there any width? See this graph right here? If I take the area from here to there, can you find the area if you don't move anywhere? It equals zero. If you take the area of a function under a curve from itself to itself, you didn't get any width. So there's no area. Next, if you take the integrable, if f is integrable, which means it's continuous. No, wait, sorry. No, it doesn't imply that. Never mind. Continuity implies in integrability. The opposite isn't always true. Anyways, if it's integrable from a to b, then a to b, if I switch the two numbers, it's the opposite. Meaning, if I want to know the area from A to B from here to here, if my numbers got switched on me, my area goes now from B to A, kind of backwards, your area will be backwards. So you have to put a negative in front to switch it back. You'll see when we see some. Basically, if usually the functions, if you have it backwards, the sign is negative. You'll see. If you have multiple intervals, if I want to find the integral from A to B, you can break it up to B to C, C to A. You can basically find the area of two intervals and add them together. If I want the area underneath this curve, I could find the area of one of them. I could find the area from here to here and then the area from here to here, correct? If I wanted it from A to B, could I find the whole area from A to B? Would that be the same as A to C and C to B? The area of the curve from A to B is the same as A to C plus C to B. A to C, C to B. 